about this before, how when a, uh, a technological innovation comes, a lot of times it's used to sort of duplicate earlier technological innovations. And we can talk things about how, like, you know, early TV was a lot like radio. You know, they knew how to do radio. So TV is like, okay, well, we got radio. Uh, and we got TV now, so we'll make things that are like radio programs, but we'll have pictures too, so it'll be a little bit better. And same thing with movies and plays, you know. And same thing with like recording music and live music, you know. Originally, recording music was like, well, let's just make a live performance and then record it. But as the time in, uh, evolved and the technology improved, and a lot of things improved, so it's both a technological change and a mindset change to say, you know what? We can do different stuff with this new technology, and we can do some things, not just duplicating stuff that we had before, but do things that maybe, in some respects, are even better or exceed the new technology. So, so far in this class, really, our focus has been kind of, more or less, replicating a, a desktop website, except on a mobile environment. And I know David has... I think jokingly said about like the, the, the mobile site being like the little brother to the big site. You know, it does, you know, it's a scaled down version. It's not as fancy. It's a little simpler. It might be less content and so on. And that's sort of an approach for many folks with mobile. But there's some things that mobile can do better than desktop. All right. Uh, and there's a whole slew of them. But the ones I'm most interested, the one I'm most interested in today and we can talk about some of the other ones later on, or we can, we can, uh, or you can investigate. But the one I'm, I'm thinking about today is as far as location goes, locating you. A mobile device is going to be far better locating you where you are than a desktop device will. All right, and this bears a little bit of explanation on why that is. All right, so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to talk about different ways that a website knows where you are, all right? Um, if you go to Google, for example, and the Google Italian restaurants, you'll get Italian restaurants in this area, all right? Is that because all the best Italian restaurants are in Elyria, Ohio? No. It's because it knows where you are, and it knows that the search will be more meaningful for you if you're in Elyria, Ohio. So it has that level of capability. With a mobile device, though, we might even be able to do better still and get more precise location and be able to do things. So let's draw my classic diagram. I should get this tattooed on my arm here so I just point, and it would save me so much time drawing. All right? We have our client. I could just see it now, like when they developed Ajax, I'd have to go in and get like it fixed. There's a show on TV, by the way, about people that get like bad tattoos that they got when they were kids fixed. Oh my God. I watched like a couple episodes. I don't know if I could take more than a couple episodes, but the, those two or three episodes were really entertaining. It's like, what were those people thinking? But uh, that, that is a, that, that's, by the way, I was talking to someone, that's an idea for, now that tattoos are more popular, if any of you are looking for a business, go into the tattoo removal business. I'm thinking five, ten years from now, that's going to be a biggie, all right? But anyhow, I digress. <laughs> it's one of those days today. I show off that as a major error. <laughs> <laughs> start the program. Start, start program. <laughs> we got the health care department. Isn't there? Yeah. I'm trying to think if the fab lab would help at all with that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> all right. All right. Now, as you know, or maybe as you don't know, but to remind you or to talk about it the first time, when you're connected to the Internet, you have an IP address. All right? And it is a, what, is a set of four three-digit numbers. That's right, right? And they can, all the three-digit numbers vary from 0 to 256? 255? 255, yeah. So, you know, this could be this could be someone's IP address. All right. 
just making those numbers up. Yes? Is an IP address essentially like when I want to order something off of Amazon, I tell it to ship it to my home address. It's kind of the same thing. Like that's where the servers know to send the information to you. Exactly. That is where another, and this is unique. So you will, you will have, now again, we're not talking about like it gets complicated if you have like a wireless router and 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 you have a couple people sharing an internet connection. Then that gets a little confusing. But in the purest theory, that but in a, yeah, in a, in a purest case, you're talking about like a single computer connected to the internet. Everyone has they all have an IP address, and that's how it knows to send it to you and not to someone else. So when you Google something, you get your results instead of someone else's results. All right, and then by the same token, a server has an IP address. All right. Those IP addresses are assigned by someone. <laughs> All right. Uh, ICON, is it? I can. I can? Yeah. Can, yeah. It's something like that. It's an organization that's, that's responsible for, for assigning uh, uh, IP addresses. And they assign them to your internet service provider. And they assign them to people that buy domains and, and all that kind of stuff. So they're responsible for doing that. And that's, that makes sure that like you don't get collisions between two of them. Someone has to keep track of this, right? Someone has to, to monitor that. So, all right? So, this someone, I can, apparently, has a table somewhere that talks about the blocks of IP addresses and who they assigned them to. So my internet is through who? That's a good question. It's through Time Warner. All right? So, they sold through time, to Time Warner in Lorain County. There's a, or they didn't sell, but they assigned a block of IP addresses to Time Warner in Lorain County. So when I connect to the internet, <clears throat> I get assigned an IP address. Now, in some cases, your IP address is permanent or relatively permanent. In some cases, it changes. Like if you had dial-up, you might get a different IP address each time. It all varies, but the fact is, is you get an IP address, and that IP address is assigned by your internet service provider. All right. So I get as I get assigned this IP address, ABC. And ICANN knows that it was sold to Time Warner in Lorain County, or it was assigned to that. So I have this IP address, which I'll just represent as ABC. All right. Now, one way of telling, and the way that Google would typically tell of where you're located, is effectively. They would, if I make a request, as you said, your address, your IP address is going to go with that, address, uh, with that request so it knows where to route the response. So your response gets back to you. So I make a request. My IP address goes with that request. It makes it to the server. This server can use some service that someone wrote, doesn't have to write it itself, but it can use a service that someone wrote to sort of tap into this table at ICANN and figure out where this person is. All right? And then based on that, you know, it knows and it has a sense of where you are. Based on that, it can customize your content. All right? So just like we, through our PHP code, have customized content based on whether it's a tablet or a, a, um, a mobile or a desktop. And we've customized our content based on the directories and the subdirectories that are out there. You know, we dynamically generate these pages so we can customize it to sort of external conditions. Well, Google and many other places can um, customize their content. So if I do a search for Italian restaurants, it knows them in Lorain County, so it waits that in the search and it will include and give priority to Lorain County um, restaurants. So Lorain County will be, restaurants will appear on the top of the list. So, yes? Now when you talk about fooling, I remember in one class we confused the yes. extension by using a proxy server? Yes. A proxy server would sort of fit, oh, got to go back to the 
a tattoo artist for this one. <laughs> a proxy server, I don't know where I would say it would fit. Maybe here? And your request would go to the proxy server. The proxy server then would make the request. The response would come to the proxy server, and the proxy server would send it to you. So we're actually going to do that, right? Because to, to demonstrate some of the features, well, this machine's in Illyria. It's going to stay in Illyria. I can't say, well, let's go drive to Cleveland and try this, you know, on an ISP. We can't do that. So what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to use proxy servers that are going to simulate that we're in other places so we can see and so we can test some code to do that. So, yeah, we're actually, we're actually are going to do that to, to, uh, to do that. And that, in a nutshell, is sort of one drawback about this, right, is it could be wrong. Someone could be faking it. All right, and, and why do folks fake an IP address? Well, there's people that are concerned about security and privacy. If you are in a country that blocks certain addresses, you might use, a, attempt to use or attempt to use a proxy server to gain access to resources that you otherwise are, are blocked by your government. All right, um, and teachers use it to demonstrate geolocation. <laughs> and every high school student nowadays uses them to get around those school's firewalls. Oh, the well, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Even. That's yeah, I was going to say, if you, if you live in a repressive regime such as <laughs> North Korea or you attend high school in America, <laughs> all right. I mean, you, they all know every single right. one. They've got like right. 12 of them that they know right. how to use. But yeah, that, that gets around the restrictions because you're not making a request to, to that. Uh, hypothetically, if someone was a fan of TV shows of the BBC, one could use that because certain BBC content is only available in the UK. So theoretically, one could circumvent that by simply connecting to a proxy server in the UK and get to watch all the great offerings of the BBC. Strictly hypothetical, by the way. All right? Now, that demonstrates sort of a, a, a fly in the ointment with this. All right? Because, yeah, in dramatic cases, people are faking it. In which case, well, I guess we don't owe them anything. So if they're Googling Ch uh, Italian restaurants and they get a list of uh, Italian restaurants in Georgia instead of Lorain County, Ohio, well, you, you deserve it, right? <laughs> I mean, you're the one that's faking the system, right? So, yeah, you can't expect the results to be correct. But yes. they're not always like, I have a static IP. Yes. And because Windstream, those are static IPs out of Nebraska. That's exactly. where all those things are from. Exactly. That was, that was my point. This is only, this depends on, again, who the IP address was assigned to and the assumption that where your IP address is assigned to is close to where you actually are. I had the problem back when I had Century. Century has something in Louisiana. Century Telephone has something in Louisiana. So I'm sure t uh, um, Century bought uh, a block, or got assigned a list of IP addresses, and maybe they were running low in Ohio, so they transferred some of them up here to, from Louisiana. So for a while, it thought I was in Louisiana, all right? For a while, I would get the German Google page when I did it, and it was weird, you know? I would go because for whatever reason, something in this data wasn't correct. So we can sort of see that this is, how do I want to put it? This is a very indirect way to figure out where you are. It depends on a lot of things being right, and if any of these are wrong, it doesn't work, all right, or gives you misleading results. And again, the people faking it using a proxy server, well, they get what they deserve, yeah, right? But they, know that they're they know they're getting it right, and that, that's not a problem. They don't have to put in Elyria, Ohio. Entirely. Yeah, right, which is kind of a, yeah, right, right. There's a second way that's really straightforward to find out where a user is. And this is one of those that's so straightforward, you might not even think of it as a way. You ask them, <laughs> right? In other words, you go to, if you go to like NBC News or whatever, yeah, it will say like, or you go to weather.com, enter in your zip code. You click that, it saves it on a little cookie on your machine, a little file. And then it knows where you are. So it can use that cookie as part of any request. So if I say, give me my current weather, it goes out and looks at that cookie and says, well, this guy's in Lorain County. Let's give him the weather for Lorain County. All right? So I didn't want to mention that just because, you know, hey, hey when all else fails, ask them, right, if, if nothing else. Now, the... Other way that can be done now, so this is server side. This is a client side technique where you actually
actually all of these are in some shape or form going to be a mix of client and server side code. For example, I'm going to have some client side code here that accesses a server to get some location data for me. All right. Another way, though, which is popular with mobile devices and popular with HTML5, is geolocation, where you actually ask the browser, where are they? And if your browser is enabled, and your device has a GPS device, then you're going up to 
Is it like fake? Doesn't it fake out all the browsers? Kind of like. Yeah, it, it via JavaScript goes and and um, allows those things to act the way that they should. Uh, again, the main new structural tags like um, header, article, footer, aside, and nav. I think. I think those are the only ones. All right, let's look up my resources. You guys hear some kind of election next week? Yeah. I think that they're running buses from the school to. Uh, yep. To, I think that I heard that somewhere. Indeed, they are. Uh, in about you might even be able to get a free meal off of them. 18, yeah, they're like, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I think, I think they're serving oh, pizza. Food there, yeah. yeah. yeah.
Okay, here we go. I have the site up on here. I think. Alright. And I can click on demo. It will ask me unless I've used this device before, it should ask me do I want to share location or not? So I'll say share location. And this browser does not request. That is it because of the pillow box? Because of? Yeah, I thought discontinued yeah, their free. Discontinued their API. Oh. Free geolocation API, which means that it no longer works. All right, we created the app. Thank you. Let's try this. Weather app revisited. <coughs> and here we go. It knows that we're in Elyria, Ohio. <coughs> and it knows it's cloudy. And it knows that it is 13 degrees Celsius, which is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I have no idea what that is Fahrenheit, but, and this knows, this also asks me if I want to use it, and this shows the same thing, all right? Now, in this case, the IP detection knows I'm in Elyria, and the GPS knows I'm in Elyria, so it doesn't give different results. But in some cases, for example, if, if you viewed this on your desktop, it might show you the weather in Nebraska, as opposed to your mobile device would show you the weather in whatever city you live in. Let's look at the code for this. Some basic stuff. We have our style sheet. Style sheet for Google APIs, for Google Fonts, HTML5 Shiv, a bunch of stuff here. Some jQuery stuff. jQuery is sort of a cousin of jQuery Mobile. It is does a similar role except um, the focus is not on mobile devices, but on giving full-blown functionality. And the functionality to do this and to load the actual weather is in this script dot JS. So let's go and take a look at that. All right. Well, I want to hit some of the highlights and then we'll go and we will um, look at it more deeply. Notice, if you notice, this is slightly...